Support for NPR and the following message come from Vimeo Create. You don't have to be an expert to create high-quality videos for your business. Add clips, pick a template, and let the smart tools of Vimeo Create handle the rest. More at vimeo.com slash create. Our talk from National Public Radio with us, Click and Clack, the Tappert Brothers, and we're broadcasting this week from the Educational Testing Division here at Car Talk Plaza. <laughs> well, and this came to us from several sources claiming to be um, answers to questions that 16-year-olds on some tests that 16-year-olds took, and in one so case, these aren't necessarily the SATs or anything. Or well, no, no, because they're they're open-ended questions. Oh, okay. Instead of multiple choice. So here they are. Here's a few of them. Name the four seasons. Some kid answers: salt, pepper, mustard, and vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> Explain one of the processes by which water can be made safe to drink. Answer. Flirtation makes water safe to drink because it removes large pollutants like grit, sand, dead sheep, and canoeists. <laughs> canoeists. <laughs> Flirtation. That's interesting. Flirtation, yeah. What guarantees may a mortgage company insist on? If you are buying a house, and this is the answer, if you are buying a house, they will insist that you are well endowed. <laughs> <laughs> How are the main parts of the body categorized? Parenthesis, for example, abdomen. Answer. The body is consisted into three parts. The brainium, the borax, and the abdominal cavity. <laughs> the brainium contains the brain, the borax contains the heart and lungs, and the abdominal cavity contains the five bowels, A E I O. Well, they may have something. <laughs> well, look, if you're shocked at how little some people know, just stick around. You ain't seen nothing yet. If you have a question about your car or anything else, give us a call. Our number is 888-CAR-TALK. That's 888-2278-255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hey, how are you doing, gentlemen? My name is Derek. I'm calling from Boston right across the river from you guys. Hi, Derek. No kidding. Where in Boston? Uh, BU. Well, you're real close. No kidding. I am. Yeah, what's going on, man? You sound nice and clear too, like you're, like you're in the next room. Like, uh, maybe you are. <laughs> that's good to know. Yeah, I'm right next door. Where would be you also? Up the street on uh, St. Paul. Oh, we can't tell you. Okay. No, we're in a van actually. We're we secret. drive around a lot because there are people who are trying to get us. And so... Yeah, like the FCC. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up? I've got a 2000 Subaru Impreza 2.5 RS. Okay. And the car sometimes violently rocks when I ease the clutch out to just go from stop to first. Oh, like it lunges. Yeah. Now, it doesn't just lunge. It lunges so hard that I get shoved back into my seat, which in turn forces my foot off the gas, which causes the car to slow down again right. very fast, which causes my foot to go back on the gas, which <laughs> shoves me back. Now, yeah. I had my, I sometimes take my roommate's dog for a ride in the front seat, and this happened one time. Oh, he and puked. He and the dog flew off the seat, and then when I started going forward again, he <laughs> flew back against the seat and yelped. So, and this only happens sometimes, and the thing is, it happens, sometimes it happens when it's in second, too, when I'm going from first to second gear. Mm. When, when it doesn't misbehave, does it seem perfectly okay or is it because you're driving especially well that day i know in other words, i've driven cars that have this problem they have what's called grabby clutches mm -hmm. and it, i i find that if i drive them with care i can often prevent what happens to you from happening to me but if i don't and i if you forget yourself and if just i drive think it absent, driving if i drive it absent-mindedly i can get into this mode where it goes oh, 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 baby. <laughs> So is that the case with you, or is it when it's good, is it perfect? Well, sometimes I can, you know, if if I am being careful, it'll do it otherwise. And when I am absent mind, sometimes it happens too. And I let my girlfriend drive it sometimes, and she's only had the problem a couple times too. So it seems like it does this when it wants to. There are many times when you are driving absent mindedly, and it's not doing this. Right. Well, see, you would like to. We would like to say that the problem is in the clutch, but I don't think so. Huh. Oh man, you don't think so? No, I don't think so. I'm going to believe it's so intermittent right. and random that it couldn't be. I I can sympathize with that feeling. Mm. Can you? I can. How I can't. sympathetic can you be? <laughs> I don't believe. Will it. you be sympathetic <laughs> no, when no, when I, Derek is I, on stump the chumps two months from now and my answer is bogus? Or are you going to say I knew it? No, I, I'm going to be. 
sympathetic enough right now to say that I already don't agree with you. Huh. Okay, I'm going to guess it's one of two things. Go okay. ahead. And I'm also going to predict that within a short period of time, maybe five to ten years... It'll be it'll the, be gone. The check engine light's going to come on. <laughs> really? Because one of two things is wrong with this car. Don't give me, don't give me that answer. What? Don't go with the vacuum leak no, answer. No, no, no. Either you have a faulty air mass meter. Air mass meter. Don't write it down because it's probably <laughs> <laughs> that one. Your lawyer might that be able to use is it against bogus. me. I use the acronym. Or, AMM. or a throttle, a faulty throttle position switch. Uh huh. And really, if either one of these things is has what's called dropouts, you know, fails for a little for split second, yes. it can cause the engine to do what you think it's doing, or what it is, in fact, doing. There will be a momentary interruption in the power. Mm. And, and so you're saying that what's really happening is nothing to do with the clutch. It's that the engine speed is changing drastically. Really? Boom, all of a sudden. Right. And then, and then it lurches. He backs off on the gas. And you set up this cycle. Where you're off the gas, on the and once it starts, the only way to stop it is to stop the car. Yeah, well, I, I, if I hit the clutch, or hit the clutch, or floor it. Yeah, that's that too. If I floor yeah. it, but then I'm then I'm off to the races. Right, and it's tough right. to do and stop and go traffic. But I would, if it if it continues, I would take it to your shop and ask them to scan it. Okay. Put the scanner on it and see if they come up with any any faults. All right. Tell them the light's been coming on. All right. You'll have to lie, but it might, you might bear some fruit. <laughs> Good luck, Derek. Wait, hey, thanks a lot. <laughs> right. So do I have to decide, like, right now whether I'm with you or again you? There you go. I'm with you. Chicken. <laughs> See you, Derek. one <laughs> car talk or 1-888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Nancy in Laurel, Mississippi. Hi, Hi Nancy. Nancy. And that's Nancy with an I. Really? Yes. With an I? With an I. In Laurel, Mississippi? In Laurel, Mississippi. That's right. All right. I thought that was a California spelling. Oh, well, I've never even been to California. So. Wow. <laughs> well, I've learned a little something today. Which that's is right. Not usual. What's up? Okay, I have a 1994 Pontiac Grand Prix. And about three months ago, when I would start it in the morning, I would get this noise that sounds like it's behind me that goes boom, 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 kind of like that, about seven or eight times. Then it doesn't do it any more in the day, usually. Occasionally, it'll do it one more time in the day if I'm running you know, air, a lot of errands. And it doesn't do it every single morning, by the way. And, and when it does it later in the day, it does it right after you've started off from a dead stop? Well, only when you start it. And then once you've started it, I, you, the car runs smoothly, not a problem, just like it always has. Yeah. The car's got 120,000 miles on it. We're getting ready to take it in. And I thought it would be nice if I had a little enlightenment before I went in that yeah. I might say. It would have been nice, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dear. Yeah. No. Uh, it, it, I'm going to ask you to do an experiment. Okay, I'm writing. And that is, instead of turning the engine on, okay. just turn the key to the on position. In other words, don't turn right. the key all the way. Right. And see if you hear the noise. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking it could be the electric fuel pump, which is in the tank. Oh, okay. Are you? I, I am thinking that that. that Gee, oh. it doesn't so didn't sound like that to me. But it sounds that's like it's a coming. Heavy from... sound, right, Nancy? Yeah. Boom, boom, a... boom, boom. That's right. She's gonna go bing, 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 bing. Oh, well, well, I mean, it, she said boom, boom, boom. Well, that's, that's boom. why we're trying to differentiate here. It could be <laughs> that the exhaust hit system, for example, yes. is hitting the underside of the car. I'm all for that. Or uh -huh. it could be something inside the exhaust system that's you know when getting heated up and causing this like baffles in the muffler. Okay. For example, so that as the muffler okay. expands, you might get this. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. And Good. then once it's warmed up, it goes away, and that would also explain why it d doesn't happen every day. If yeah. you if you I, I don't know it. how it would explain how it doesn't happen every day, but <laughs> we'll leave that up to your imagination. Well, it's a function of how smoothly the engine is running. Yeah. If the engine isn't running really smoothly, yeah, then it's more likely that the exhaust system is shaking. Okay. But I think you have a loose baffle inside the muffler. I loose don't. Baffle. And okay. I'm, sti I'm sticking with that, Nancy. I don't think, believe my brother. I think don't believe he's nuts. an exhaust Stop. pipe is banging against something, which they'll be able to tell easily. Okay. When they have it up on the lift, they'll just shake the exhaust system. And if they hear the boom, 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 right. there it is. Because it they'll be able to shake it enough All to right. make the noise. So okay. it's either going to cost you $6 or 600
Well, okay. We'll we'll try to go for the six. All <laughs> right. See you, Nance. Thank you. Thanks Bye-bye. for calling. Bye bye. Uh-huh. And thanks for teaching us about the I ending for teaching Mississippi. you. I mean, I, I I you knew about that. No, I didn't. Oh. Uh, but I'm not interested. One eight 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 Car Talk. That's eight 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 two two seven eight two five five. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Bill from Manchester, New Hampshire. Hi, Bill. What's up? Um, I have a 91 Volvo 740 wagon, and um, last September, my odometer just stopped working all of a sudden, mm. which got to be kind of a pain because I couldn't tell when to change my oil. And So I went to my mechanic, and um, he was looking at several hundred dollars, five or six hundred dollars to replace the whole panel because there's no way you can just replace the odometer itself. Oh, the speedometer does work? The speedometer works, but the odometer doesn't. Mm. Well, didn't. But then, mm. uh, in November... Um, I went out to the seacoast to go kayaking, and the night before that, I had a dream, and um, it was, I don't know what the dream was about, but in the course of the dream, I remembered that my odometer was working, and I said to myself in the dream, I said, that's kind of weird, because my odometer wasn't working before. The next day, as I um, was doing this kayaking trip, I got in the car, and I started driving, and my odometer started working after two months. Oh, get out, man. man. It was uh, it was really weird, and I and I saw it working like within a couple of tenths after when it started because I had, obviously I had kind of memorized, memorized the number. What, where it had been at for two months, sure. and um, and you so, had a dream the night before. Yeah, it was it was really weird, and so um, it's been oh, working ever since, and um, which is great. You know, I don't have to go out and uh, spend the five or six hundred bucks, but I'm wondering if you guys would have. I mean, I would expect that um, if it broke uh, like that and it, it fixed can break itself. Again. Break again, and I wonder if you know both maybe the mechanical and both the I mean the uh, metaphysical reasons for this. You know, yeah. Like kind of so, both. you want to know how come it broke? Who screens these calls? <laughs> how come it fixed itself? <laughs> and did the ocean air have anything to do with it, or was it purely because of the dream? Right. Are those the, are those the issues here? Those are the issues, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> real, a real easy question, you know. <laughs> I don't think I can answer any of those questions. But he's going to try. We, we, Boy, that was easy. Of course, no, we'll try. Let's let's go to the mechanical stuff first. That should we should have some hang, some feel for that, right? Uh, does, so. does this this vehicle also has a trip odometer? Yes, it does. That's is that worked. also malfunctioning? Yep. That now works. Yep. Dread. So this is a purely mechanical odometer, probably, right? Yeah. My mechanic was going to put in a used one, not a used one, but in, one out of a junk. And I remember seeing the unit. Yeah. And it was it looked completely mechanical. You saw gears. I saw gears. Does it have a cable? I mean, I don't remember. Yeah, I saw it out of the car, so I don't know what yeah. exactly how it was connected. Mm. Well, suffice Hold it to on. say, whether we'll, we'll make assumptions here. Don't don't go away. Okay. We're not going to give up. Whether it has a cable or not. Gears are involved. Ge- gears are involved. <laughs> <laughs> so if if the thing stopped turning, a gear somewhere stopped turning, probably the very first one, right? Yeah. No. Wait a minute. The the <laughs> day, the morning after you had the dream, you had the dream at night, right? Yes, that's right. You got in the car. Mm-hmm. And I, I drove it for... We're killing you, Louie. I just want... <laughs> I drove it for 100 miles, and, and the odometer was not fixed. And then I got in the car later in the afternoon. And you did something. I did nothing. Yeah. I got in the car and started driving up a hill, and all of a sudden, it's working. Up a hill. There's something. Let's <laughs> let's latch on to that. It's a start, had, huh? <laughs> had you ever <laughs> had you <laughs> ever driven up a hill before? <laughs> no, I used I, I came from Iowa. No, no, I, this is New England. I, had you ever driven hill here. up a hill before? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I think I've stumped you, huh? Oh. <laughs> Oh, jeez, Bill. Jeez, I, I think I think unconsciously. You ready for this? Okay. Yeah. Unconsciously, you jiggled the mm. trip odometer reset thing, and that fixed your odometer. I, I must have hit that thing fifty times after it broke. Well, yeah. it needed the fifty first. <laughs> okay. Oh man, jeez. I, I, yeah, I mean, there's, there's I, no good reason. There's no good reason. I mean, it had to have been up. I mean, it's, I think it is a purely mechanical system, which means that what made it not work was two gears not meshing. As simple as that. Mm-hmm. Now, that could be because a gear was broken. But if it were but broken, if it, it wouldn't broken, be broken, it wouldn't fix itself. 
So something was simply misaligned. Mechanically misaligned or yeah. Mechanically. metaphysically misaligned? Okay. Yeah, oh, oh, metaphysically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could have been metaphysically as well. So now what have you what have you done with your newfound uh, good fortune here? I mean, have you gone out and celebrated the return of your uh, odometer? Yeah, I changed my oil. So, cuz yeah. now I know know when it's turning over, you know, 3000 miles, yeah. I can change my oil and I know when my um, timing belt was uh, replaced, so I can pay attention to replacing it the next time since I'm going to drive this car for a million miles. I well, kind of don't stuff forget, stuff. I mean, you have other ways of, of measuring miles. You can but, use the sun, for example. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, for example, my MG does not have a gas gauge, but it does have an odometer. And oh, therefore, I, see, I use yeah. the odometer as a gas gauge, yeah. which, means, which means you could use a gas gauge as an odometer. I know I get one, 21 miles to the gallon. and There you go. 14 right. gallons and so, to the tank. And, yeah. Right, I mean, and driving those long, empty expanses up there in New Hampshire, you have plenty of time to do what? The calculations. math. Calculations. Sit there and do calculations on my leg while I'm talking on my cell phone and having a cup yeah. of coffee. Yeah. Right? Well, I'm happy that your odometer readings are back, and I wish you the very best, Bill. Thank you very much. Yeah, I and I, I would let sleeping dogs lie. Okay. See you, Bill. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. Hey, all right. Here's here's your hint about last week's puzzle. You ready? Yeah. The band at the Waldorf ain't in it, and Nantucket will not help you win it. The puzzler is next, mathematically vexed. So stay tuned. We'll be back in a minute. Man, it's a haiku. <laughs> I love it. Wake up in the morning, brush my teeth and call my And even though Ernest Shackleton outfits another doomed expedition to the Antarctic whenever he hears us say it, this is NPR. This message comes from Car Talk and NPR sponsor BetterHelp, the online counseling service dedicated to connecting you with a licensed counselor to help you overcome whatever stands in the way of your happiness. Fill out a questionnaire and get matched with a professional tailored to your needs. And if you aren't satisfied with your counselor, you can request a new one at any time free of charge. Visit BetterHelp.com slash CarTalk to get 10% off your first month. Get the help you deserve with BetterHelp. This message comes from Pineapple Street Studios' new podcast, Stay Away from Matthew McGill. The story of a man who dies alone in the woods and leaves behind a box full of wild stories. When reporter Eric Menel finds this box, he becomes consumed by it until it totally changes his life and family. New episodes are available every week wherever you get your podcasts. Binge all episodes exclusively on the new Odyssey app. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y. On Bullseye this week, Tina Fey. On creating Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, 30 Rock, and being the best at everything. There was a window of time when we used to go to awards things and pick up our prizes and party with the people from Mad Men. That's this week on Bullseye for MaximumFun.org and NPR. Hi, we're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers, and we're here to talk about cars, car repair, and uh, the answer to last week's mathematically uh, uh, yeah, po- poetic puzzle. Yeah, that was an interesting juxtaposition of, of things, huh? Mathematics and poetry, uh, well, if you want to call it poetry. Well, yeah, in a matter of speaking. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you the mathematical equation, and the puzzler is to turn this equation into a limerick. So it must have the proper meter, you know. Da 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 and the band of the Waldorf Astoria. It's gotta be. It's gotta end like that. If only we could have made it end like that, it would have been a perfect puzzle. Anyway, here's the equation. You get your pencil. I'm gonna get one. Yeah. Okay. Here's the numerator of a fraction: twelve plus one forty-four. 
plus 20 plus 3 times the square root of 4. That's the numerator. Draw the line. That's divided by 7. Yeah. Add to that whole thing 5 times 11. Mm -hmm. And that expression equals 9 squared plus 0. Plus 0. Isn't that that's the plus 0? And as a hint, I gave you the last line of the limerick, which goes, is 9 squared and not a bit more, which is the yeah. 9 yeah. squared plus 0. And part. Not and not a bit more. You ready for Plus the zero. You ready for the answer? Yeah, I I love this. A dozen, a gross, and a score, plus three times the square root of four. You with me so far? I'm with you. Divided by seven, plus five times eleven, is nine squared and not a bit more. <sighs> A dozen, a gross, and, and a score. And of course, score. if you do it, it, it works, right? A dozen is 12, a gross is 144, a score is 20, yep. plus three times the square root of four, which is Literal. three times I mean, two, is. which is six, divided by seven, mm -hmm. plus five times 11 is 81. It's nine squared and not a bit more. Who's our winner, man? And the band at the Waldorf. <laughs> <laughs> the winner is Lynn Klein from Oxford, England, or Pennsylvania. <laughs> Oxford, Pennsylvania, and for having her answer selected at random from among both of the correct answers that we got, Lynn will get a $25 gift certificate to the Car Talk store on our website. And with that $25 gift certificate, she can buy our father's CD, Why You Should Never Listen to Your Father When It Comes to Cars. And Lynn can use that as a gift, for instance, for her Budinsky father-in-law. Oh, yeah. Every time he's well. trying to give her advice, <laughs> and can say, here, listen to this, jerk. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Anyway, we'll have a new puzzle. Well, I can't really say new. New for most uh, coming up in the third half of today's show. A repurposed show. puzzler? Not really. You'll see. In the meantime, we'll take your calls at one eight 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 car talk That's 888-227-8255. Hello. You're on Car Talk. My name is Sally. Good friend. Hi, I live, Sally. Sally, good, good friend. Good friend. Good. Just the way it sounds. What, what, a name. what a great name to have. I know. I married my husband because of the name. Oh, really? so it's his name. His name. Is, 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 has he lived up to his name? Yes, he has. No just, kidding. Not just to you, but to everyone else? I mean, is he a good friend to those he knows? To those that deserve it, yes. Oh, so, oh. so he's actually a bum, but okay. No, he's not. No, 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 he's wonderful. <laughs> I'm sure he Friends is. He's my those. sugar daddy. He's your sugar daddy. <laughs> yes. So what's up, Sally? Where well, are you from, we got a little disagreement in the family. Uh -huh. Oh, we uh -huh. have to know where you're from first. I don't know why, but it's an FCC okay, rule. Okay, I'm from Los Gatos, California. Los oh. Gatos. Los Gatos, Gatos means the cats in Spanish. Yeah, yes. we know that. Okay. Some of the few words that we know in Spanish. Well, and the other right. ones we can't repeat because of FCC <laughs> rules and regulations, but go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So you got to, we have a little problem in the family. Yes. Well, yeah. my husband gets 400 miles approximately to a tank of gas. He says, unless I have 400 miles, I'm not putting gas in. Yeah. Now, I only get on a good time... 168 miles. If I get 200 miles to a tank, I'm in heaven. <laughs> and our disagreement is, my husband, he's a Chevron Standard kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And this is what he puts in his car. Uh, I buy the generic cheap stuff like Rotten Robbie, mm -hmm. and I pump it myself. <laughs> okay. Is there really a difference? Whether you put in expensive gas or cheap gas? Not a two-to-one difference. Well, I mean, we have we have an uncontrolled experiment here. Okay. And we have a lot of confounding factors. Okay. Uh, not the least of which is the fact that your husband would be lying. <laughs> no, he's not. Good friend name he's notwithstanding. He's kind of car. Well, first of all, what kind of a car is it? Well, he's driving the top-of-the-line Lexus sedan. Okay. I'm driving a Jaguar XJS V12. Oh, 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 I thought it was the same car. Oh, so no. It's, oh, so it's even more confounded than I thought. Well, and plus the Chevron makes my car ping, and Rotten Robbie doesn't make it ping. <laughs> Rotten Robbie. <laughs> That's why we have this big argument, and he thinks you guys are wonderful, and you're supposed to settle it. Sure, we're going to settle it. I mean, okay. you've got so many confounding factors here that he, let me just rot, rattle them off for you. Okay. First of all. His tank might be twice as big as yours. So you got to find out how many gallons does his tank hold, how many gallons does your tank hold. Right. He only has two-thirds as many cylinders as you have. Right. you got two different, completely different cars. He so, only holds 
about 20 gallons, and I hold either 18 or 20. Right. You may drive like a nut. Yeah. No. What? I'm a little old lady in tennis shoes. But you, where do you drive? I only have 15,000 miles on my car. Do you drive ah. around town? Do you drive on the highways? I drive more around town. Right. I notice when I go on the highway, you guys are right. If I'm going up to San Francisco and back, that's when I hit the 200 miles to a tank. Sure. All right. No, and plus, the, around town, I mean, they don't publish the, the numbers. I mean, they're, they're a secret. They lie. They, they lie, probably, too. Yeah, when you bought the car, affixed to the window was the thing with the EPA. Mm-hmm. Did it have, were they, like, negative numbers? <laughs> <laughs> you know how they say this car gets so many miles city, so many miles highway? Guys, my husband buys the car for technology. I buy a car for the way it looks and makes me feel driving topless. So, you are, you're not I don't pay kidding. attention to the numbers. So you didn't. So you didn't care about the numbers. No. So this XJS is a convertible. Yes. Oh, we were concerned there when you said. Are you, you married, just... Sally? <laughs> yes. I... Would you like to be married again? <laughs> well, I've been happily married for twenty-two years. Well, I'm so have I, well. but that doesn't mean anything. I mean, yes, it's it not. Does. <laughs> it isn't often that a woman comes along driving an XJS V12. Uh, I'm blonde too. And a blonde. Yeah. And topless. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer, what was the question? The we question forgot. still is, does it make any oh. difference whether we, whether I put in, in my fancy little car, if I have to pay the mega bucks out here in Los Gatos for Chevron or the you know, top-of-the-line gas, yeah. or if I can go to Rotten Robbie for Supra and let it. That's what you have to put in that thing, yeah. by the way, is, is, is yeah, the absolutely. highest octane. Right. And if it yeah. runs all right and it doesn't ping... You can use Rotten Robbie's gas because he's right. probably buying it from the Chevron That's dealer. That's right. And and there's very little to say that that you're not driving properly or that you're buying the wrong gas. You guys have different cars, different engines, and the truth is that if he drove your car, he would probably only get 200 miles to the tank as well. But you wouldn't let him drive yours because you're having too much fun. I mean, Ryan Wright, he doesn't drive mine. He's driven it once, and that was once too much. Don't let him near it. No, absolutely not. He's no good friend of yours, Sally. Trust me on this. Yes, he is. <laughs> and t- tell him to stay away and mind his own business. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you guys, really, it doesn't really make any difference. No. No, I don't think so. Keep so doing what could, you're doing. Whatever whatever it is. put Rotten Robbie in his little Lexus that he loves, and he'd be saving a lot of money, right? Yep. No, but if anything ever went wrong with it, you he'd, would he'd never blame you. hear the end of it. Yeah. Well, that's true. So let him do what he does. Yeah. And I'll do what I'm happy to do. There you go. Sure. Okay, guys. See you, Sally. Thanks. <laughs> Bye-bye. Hey, I got something to read here. Who's it from? K-A-K. CAC. CAC L- Fowler. You, you gave a little puzzle last week, which was poetic mathematics. This is similar to that. Really? He says, Dilbert's salary theorem states that engineers and scientists can never earn as much as administrators and salespeople, right? The theorem can now be proven mathematically. And here really? it is. You ready for this? You might need a pencil for this. I got it. Okay, here it is. It's, here's the given. Power equals work divided by time. Mm-hmm. Right? We know that. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, knowledge is power. Right. Substituting knowledge for power, we got knowledge equals work <laughs> divided by time. Right. And then we know that time is money. Right. Everyone knows that. That means knowledge is work divided money. by money. Right. You solve this equation for money, and you get money equals work divided by knowledge. Got it. Right. Money I'm equals right. work. I Therefore, it. as knowledge approaches zero, money approaches infinity. Of course. Regardless <laughs> of the amount of work done. <laughs> Conclusion, the less you know, the more you make. <laughs> it works for me. <laughs> <laughs> that was, they didn't teach you that kind of math when you were in high school, did they? No, indeed. I mean, what are they wasting your time with geometry when there's this kind of stuff? Knowledge is power. Yeah. And time is money. I mean... It's, Sure, it's a simple substitution. It's a simple substitution. There's, there's hardly any math involved. I thought it was brilliant. <laughs> Look, if you have anything that my brother can read during the week, you know, box tops, max book covers, gas grill assembly instructions, he's Whatever. an expert. Send it to him here at Mail for Tommy, Car Talk Plaza, Box 3500, Harvard Square, Cambridge. My Fair City. Matt 022 Three eight, my fair city. Excuse well, it's my me. fair city because the mail's coming to me. Mail oh, I, talk, I got see. it. Or you can email him from cartalk.com if you'd like to talk to us. The number is eight 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 car talk. That's eighty eight eighty two twenty seven eighty two fifty five. Huh? Hello, you're on car talk. <laughs> 
This is Suzanne. I'm from Syracuse. With a Z? With a Z and two N's. Yeah, Syracuse. How mm-hmm. lousy a place is Syracuse? You know, it's not a bad place to live. The weather, Th- really? The weather is abysmal for yeah. about five months of the year. Five? Yeah, December to April. Yeah, December to, to uh, what, July. What about like October, November? Oh, they're beautiful. May. No, October, November are nice. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. December to April, it's ugly. But other than that, it's not a bad place to live? There's lots to do. The economy's good. Oh, good. All right, you ready? Yeah, go ahead. I have a problem that's going to make your brain cramp. Yeah. I got a 93 Mazda Protégé standard. I had the radiator replaced a couple months ago, and I noticed that it started to overheat, so I decided I would be brave and replace the thermostat. That, this was after you had the radiator replaced. Yes. It's still overheated. Still overheated. And, gotcha. my, and my, you had the radiator replaced to correct because this Because it was overheating? No, I had the radiator replaced because it was leaking. Okay, got it. And then it started overheating afterwards? Yes. Okay, just want to get this, okay. this chronology correct. So, um, in the process of changing the thermostat, I broke some $35 sensor. In the process of putting everything back together, I decided I was going to change the distributor cap because I had a new one, so I might as well put it on. And I broke a spark plug wire. And then my friend and I got laughing while we were doing that, so we put it on in the wrong order. Yeah. And my poor little car was bucking and spitting, and it, it bucked so hard that it blew the air filter off. It was really ugly. It smelled terrible. It was drinking gas like it was out of a gallon oh, jug. Oh, sure, yeah. So, you know, we, we, used to, we used to have a do-it-yourself auto repair shop, <laughs> yeah. and people would come in, people much like you, mm-hmm. to do things much like you did, mm-hmm. and we had to give them a little lecture all the time. <laughs> and we said... You probably think that you came in here and your goal is to fix something. Mm -hmm. That is your third goal. Your first goal is don't get hurt. (laughs) And your second goal is try not to break anything that I already broke. Oh, it just got And then your next goal might be to fix whatever you came in to fix. Okay. But so you fit, at least you didn't hurt yourself. Not too bad. And I will say, I ducked when the air filter flew. In the few years that we ran the do it yourself shop. Uh huh. We managed to amass a lifetime of laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> so we may have to we may have to add this to the scrapbook. But to this go ahead. day, we only have to mention a name or a car, and we both we both <laughs> break into laughter because we remember that day. Well, to add insult to injury, in trying to find the right order. I ended up running out the battery, couldn't get it, so we finally decided to take it to the dealer. My friend towed me to the dealer, and the tow rope broke, and I was like the guy at the end of Crack the Whip when you ice skate. <laughs> this is a right male or a female? Ramp. This is a male or a female friend? This was a female friend. Okay. Yeah. I got my new thermostat on, life is good, and my car is still overheating. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that funny. <laughs> When does it overheat, on the highway or around town? Around town. And it seems to overheat worse when the clutch is out and I'm driving in gear. If I put the clutch all the way in or partially in, I can gun the engine and the temp sensor little thing drops down. Really? Yeah. How fast does it move from from overheating to normal? Uh, Relatively quickly. I mean, I I know that I can change it at a stoplight generally. So within a matter of seconds? 15 seconds, 20 seconds. It'll go from overheating or very near hot uh-huh. right down to the middle. Right and if, down if, to the middle. And if while you're sitting there, yep. you take your foot off the clutch, the, the thing will climb back up? Uh, yes. I don't believe it. Okay. You want me to drive <laughs> it up there? <laughs> Can you try another story on it? <laughs> <laughs> no, Wait, it really does. When you, you put your foot on the clutch, but you said you rev up the engine. Yep. How about if you didn't put the clutch it in? It would still drop back down. I think so. You too. think it would? Sure. The clutch has nothing to do with it. What, hap- what, what has something to do with it is the fact that you're revving up the engine. But it does not overheat when you're driving at high speed. No. If I'm on the highway, it seems to be fine. Even though Newton Minow says this is exactly the sort of vast wasteland I was talking about (laughs) whenever he hears us say it, this is NPR. Support for NPR and the following message come from Vimeo Create. Make professional videos for your business using Vimeo's pre-built templates. Just drop your footage into one of hundreds of templates and their smart tools will generate a professional looking video in seconds. Create and distribute to your audience in minutes. More at vimeo.com slash create. 
This message comes from Pineapple Street Studios' new podcast, Stay Away from Matthew McGill. The story of a man who dies alone in the woods and leaves behind a box full of wild stories. When reporter Eric Menel finds this box, he becomes consumed by it until it totally changes his life and family. New episodes are available every week wherever you get your podcasts. Binge all episodes exclusively on the new Odyssey app. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y. Making something original and creative is hard, but sustaining that is even harder. I'm Guy Raz from How I Built This, and I just want to say congratulations to NPR's Planet Money for 1,000 episodes, and it's still so smart and surprising and delightful as ever. Just check out Planet Money's episode 1,000 celebration to see what I mean. Ha! We're back. You're listening to Car Talk with us, Click and Clack, the Tappert Brothers, and we're here to discuss cars, car repair, and the, the new puzzler. And this was sent in, I can't, the day, oh, February. <laughs> That's not bad. Not bad by fellow named... A couple of months? I'm assuming, yeah, Lee this Hull. This year, February of this coming, this of this past, present of, year. Of this current year, Lee Hall from Westfield, Indiana. Pay attention now because okay. there are lots of hints and all, obfuscations. I can and, imagine. And I, I am all ears. None of which are mine. They're all Lee's. He did an admirable job. He did. Listen up. Yeah. After an enjoyable Saturday of tooling around town in my old Lincoln Mark V, listening to car talk and running errands, my wife and I were preparing for bed. And I said to her, I saw something happen today that I've not seen in probably 10 years. That's great, honey. Good night, she said, rolling over. But I was was persistent. You know, now that I think about it, I said, I've only seen this happen maybe four or five times in my life. And every time I've been on the road driving, I could tell that her snoring was faked. I went on. In fact, I knew when I left the house this morning that it was going to happen. I just didn't know exactly where. She opened one eye to give me an intimidating stare. It happened just as we were passing over the Main Street Bridge. Blatant obfuscation, Mm -hmm. you wrote. (laughs) (laughs) Well, why didn't you say something? Why didn't you say something, she said. Oh, you're old enough to have seen it a few times yourself, I'll bet. It really isn't that exciting. Now I had her full attention, but still I wouldn't tell her what I had seen. Come to think of it, it's happened a few times, and I didn't even notice myself. The sad thing is, I'm pretty sure our son will never see it happen, and most kids today never will either. What happened that day? Now, if you think you know the answer, write it on the underside of a Subio Aquarius submersible watercraft with seating for three, a sealed nickel sodium power plant, monocoque hull with integral buoyancy tanks, and a large print navigational map of the Charles River. <laughs> and send it to Puzzler Tower, Car Talk Plaza, Box 3500, Harvard Square, Cambridge. Our Fair City. Mat 02238. Or you can email us your answer from cartalk.com. Right now, if you have a question for us about your car, the number is uh, 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 888-CAR-TALK. That's 888-2278-255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. This is uh, Bauman calling from Philadelphia, and uh, oh, I'm calling about say my it, Say it again. Bauman, B-A-H-M-A-N. I love it. What kind of a name is that? Uh, what kind of name? It's uh, Persian, Iranian. Persian. Bauman. Yes. Bauman. I love it. <laughs> well, I'm glad you do. Yeah. Persian. I'll tell my mom you like my name then. Sounds peaceful. Well, actually, it uh, it actually translates into an avalanche or a tornado in our language. Oh, yeah, that's peaceful. It's peaceful, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My brother's got a sense for this. You so, know. Yeah. So, so, I you know, know language, I was, man. <laughs> same, when I was little, every time my mom passed by my room, she said I uh, definitely named you properly after seeing my room. <laughs> <laughs> well, she she's the one who came up with the name, probably. That's right. <laughs> so what's up, man? Uh, I mean, Bob? Ha- <laughs> I have a Honda Civic. Uh, it's got 37,000 miles on it. The issue is when uh, the car is still, when I first turn on the car or even if throughout the day, whenever I turn on the car, if I'm perfectly still, if you like put your hands on, on the steering wheel, you can feel the car shaking, vibrating in the same sense that uh, in, in, on a really cold winter day with any car, when you first turn it on, it's kind of like shaking, kind of cold. Mm-hmm. Um, but cold or hot, it doesn't matter. The car mm-hmm. kind of vibrates. You've had this car since new? Yeah. And has it been doing this ever since the day no. you got it? No, it's been about a year now. Ah. I, and, and I'll tell you exactly what, it started last winter, but I was like, no, it's just, you know, cold, cold, cold. winter days. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's just my, when you're moving, it's perfectly fine. 
it, it shakes even when it's in park or only when it's in drive? It's when the car is standing, so it doesn't matter what gear it's in. If the car is not moving, that's when I feel it. So right. it's in drive, and you've got your foot on the brake, and it's the same as it, it is if you're exactly, in park. Exactly, exactly. With, with the park or drive, exactly. Well, it's now, that, maybe when I'm moving, maybe the, the sound of just the moving car is sure, you know, no, overwhelming whatever's going on yeah. underneath. Right, the, all the, the other moving shakes. has nothing to do with it because it would always be okay. Right. Unless there was something drastically wrong. Right. What, what I, I mean, there are two things that come to mind. Mm -hmm. uh, what were they? There two, <laughs> all right. There's, there's one thing that came right to mind. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, there are two things that come to mind. One is that you have a vacuum leak in the engine. Vacuum. And, 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 and the vacuum leak would cause one of the cylinders, or maybe more than one, to not fire with the same intensity because the mixture is getting leaned out mm -hmm. uh, as the other cylinders. Okay. And that might not be so easy to find, but that might be the first thing I would look for. And... If you have a vacuum leak, you'll notice the engine is shaking even as you look at it running in park. You'll notice it not running smoothly and evenly. Right. If, however, you're feeling vibrations being telegraphed through the chassis and the steering wheel, chances are you have a bad motor mount. Bad motor. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, I you, could feel bad motor mount. You could have a bad motor mount, but it, it could easily be... Uh, a vacuum leak, which is causing the engine to not run on all four cylinders. Right. And, and these, because there's so little mass in these cars, right. that any little vibration or anything that's out of, right. out of whack right. immediately manifests itself as a whole car kind of vibration. The car is le literally less than three years old. I mean, isn't that something that should be covered by Honda? That it's just, is it a bad part? Is Absolutely. It? I would okay. go back and complain. Right. Yeah, especially if you tell them it's been doing this for a year. Have you been to the dealer to complain about this vibration? I have. Ah. Well, actually, you know what? It's at thirty-seven thousand. I guess I passed my thirty-six thousand mile warranty, but uh, yeah, I'm but that's sure. okay because you complained of the problem prior to the thirty, the thirty-six thousand mile. Right, and if they don't give you satisfaction, call us next week. We'll tell you how to turn the odometer. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> see you, Bobman. Thanks a lot. Thanks for calling. Bye. 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 Hey, you know what time it is? Time to unload the snow tires as all season tree swings. No, no, no! It's time to play stump the chumps. This is the part of the show where we unearth a caller from a previous show to see if our advice was good, bad, or just plain ugly. <laughs> <laughs> so who's our victim this week? It's Leslie from Sebastopol, California. Remember Leslie? Of course I do. Leslie who? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember either. It says here, Leslie called us a couple of months back about her Civic. Seems it was embarrassing her whenever she started it up. First thing in the morning, it makes this sound. <laughs> Except it, it's more metallic. And I'm going to ask a very important this is, question. This is good, but yeah. When it goes away, is there any possibility that it's still there but on a much smaller scale? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, boy, that's a tough one. That is a yeah. tough one. Um, well, the success of my answer depends on your answer. <laughs> oh, dear. So it's my fault if you get it wrong. Bingo. Right? Um, yeah, boy, I, you know, I don't know. Now, there's one other piece. That I don't know if it's related to this. When I start the car up, if I have the fan on, I smell exhaust. Oh, oh it's going to fit right. I knew you were thinking of that. I, I, I knew you were I thinking had it of that. from the very beginning. <laughs> you did. Excellent. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I read your mind. Quick read, huh? <laughs> well, you thought it was a cracked or leaky exhaust manifold, and I agreed completely with you. I actually agreed with you. I mean, why? what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah, bad sign, huh? Well, let's see how we did. Leslie, are you there? Yes, I am. All right, look, before we find out whether we were right or wrong, we need to confirm that we have not spoken since your last appearance on Car Talk. Is that true? That is totally true. And your answer has not been influenced by our staff, the staff of National Public Radio, or the Sommelier's Guide to Sebastopol's Best Restaurants that we sent you. Is that true also? That is also totally true. Oh, great. Well, is it also true that our answer was correct? Was it the exhaust manifold? You guys were totally correct. Oh! Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Congratulations. One out of 20 isn't bad. <laughs> 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 That's great. Well, I think that was a gimme because when when my brother and I agree, it's almost a guarantee that we're both wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so we were... did you fix it yet or are you still uh, breathing the fumes? Yeah, I did fix it, definitely. And you know what the funny thing is? 
is I took it to the dealer to see how much it would cost, Uh and it turned out that they had extended the warranty on (gasps) it, so it didn't cost me anything. Well, we actually put in a call to the dealer to tell them to (laughs) to take care of of our pal Leslie. (laughs) Yeah, and whatever else it was, to replace the manifold anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, thanks for playing Stump the Chumps. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. If you, the listener, should hear someone that you'd like us to bring back for Stump the Chumps, please email us your suggestions from cardtalk.com. Isn't it take back? <laughs> you can call <laughs> and try to stump us right now. The number is 888-CAR-TALK. That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, uh, this is Toby, and I'm calling from Needham, Mass. Needham, Massachusetts. I even know where that is. What's on your mind, Toby? Well... I think this might be an easy call for you because Thank you guys are God. males and you're car lovers just like my husband, and I need some advice about him. Yeah. It's been like almost two years, and we have been trying to get rid of our third car, which is a 1968 BMW 2002, and my husband just won't get rid of it. And I mm. need some good advice from you on how to get him off his duff because I really want this car out of here. Wait, what you said was that we've been trying to sell it for three years. No, you you, you've been trying to get him to sell it, but he's made very little, if any, effort. I've been really patient, and I've just kind of had it, so... Well, why have you had it? Is it, is it taking up valuable space that you could otherwise it's have ugly. A, a Lexus? It's ugly. Oh, it's a beautiful car, but it doesn't move because the clutch doesn't engage. Oh, oh. And it takes up space in our garage, and we're paying insurance and everything on it, so it costs money. Mm. Now, here's the real kicker. This is really my car, because it was given to me by a, as a birthday gift by a former boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, it has sentimental value for your husband. I have no idea why. Yeah. Well, he thinks it's zippy. Well, why, don't you, why doesn't he fix it up? Why don't you make I it mean, a drivable he, vehicle again? Is he planning to fix it at any time? Wait maybe? a second. Why should we put more money into it? Well, because he wants to. Hey, we have kids to send to college, <clears throat> too, you know. I mean, you've got to gotta keep the mechanics of the world uh, busy. Yeah, but why do we need three cars? Everyone well, needs three cars. Only three? <laughs> How many drivers in the family? Two. Two. That's about right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> for a while, we had three drivers in the family and five cars. And my brother always decided which one to drive by checking the gas gauge. <laughs> no, no, I'm not uh, taking that I one today. I won't be taking that one today. <laughs> ah, well, I mean... See, I, w- I wish I could be on your side, Toby. Yeah, I do too. But having been in, the, in a similar situation, I have to say that, that there's something happening, you know, between your husband and the car. And, and maybe your former boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, you hadn't uh. thought about that. <laughs> no, so no. the car's not ugly and beat up and, and it's not an eyesore. It, it's, it's just that it doesn't run. But it may well be that he's trying to fix it. And he's probably, no. but he's probably planning to fix it. He just hasn't gotten around to it. He just doesn't do things very fast. Is he, he, engineer, is he an engineer? Yeah, he's Are, an engineer, isn't he? Yeah. How'd you guess? Oh, pff, hmm. they're all the same. Yeah. No, you're yeah. gonna be stuck with this car. Yeah. You could, you could use the technique my wife uses uh, with considerable success. Yeah. Oh. She throws stuff away when he's not home. Exactly. <laughs> and I'll be, I'll be in the closet looking for, you know, my. Blue winter coat, the one with the big hole in it. <laughs> and I'll ask her where it is, and she says, you never owned a blue <laughs> coat. And I say, oh. I, I didn't? Yeah. No. So practice saying, what BMW? Exactly. So you might be able to make this thing disappear, and you might not ever notice it. So the monkey's on my back, and I have to do it. Yeah, oh, I think so. I think if you want to get rid of this thing, it's up to you. But you shouldn't just junk it, because it has some value. Yeah. And there are people who would kill for this car. Right. There aren't many of them around, especially here in this frozen, Here's what great you do. frozen north. You, you sell it on eBay, you get your husband to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> it costs you even more money. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what to, to recommend. I, I don't but, think you have to do anything. But uh, but I think it may cause a rift if you sell it from under him. Of I, course, it's going to cause a there's rift. There's something. There's something going on here, and and well, uh, it's causing a rift now, but only because I think Toby needs to get some uh, has to readjust her thinking. She thinks it's just a big thing that's taking up space in the garage. Right. I mean, one man's trash is another man's treasure. So I need to find the man who treasures it. Well, that's profound. No, no, it's his treasure. Just leave him alone. Well, since you're not driving it, and no one's driving. Don't it. forget, you probably own the whole damn house. Everything in the house is probably your junk. 
<laughs> he's got a couple of square feet in the gar- in the garage yet. Right. And he's you're, an engineer. And you're, he's got three pairs of plaid pants <laughs> hanging up in the closet. Right. And two pocket protectors and one pair of glasses with the black frames. And, the and you're on his case the- for a hundred square feet in the garage. Get off his case. <laughs> That's it. Come on. I'm sick of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I'll be sleeping in the old garage. I, I, here's, here's my compromise solution. I hope he's not talking. You notice? No. But I, <laughs> I, I think. I'm in for, shock. I, really, <laughs> I think you should. Well, you're not driving the car, so I think it's reasonable to cancel the registration and the insurance. Oh, right. That's because good. the car never leaves. Would you stop it? Oh, and, and and that would be his incentive. Say, look, when you get it to the point where it runs again, we'll register it and we'll drive the car. Oh, that's a great idea. That isn't a bad idea, actually. The only trouble with that is if there's a fire, which which, given Toby's frame of mind, there could be. Could there be a (laughs) fire? Well, given all the junk in our garage. (laughs) There could be. But But at least you won't be paying the expense of the insurance and, and, and the registration. And if it sits there and just rots away and never is driven again. It won't have cost you any money. It'll simply have cost you space. Oh, that's a good idea. Isn't it? Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> See you, Toby. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Bye bye. <laughs> well, it's happened again. You've blown off another perfectly good hour listening to Car Talk. Yeah. Our steam producer is Doug the Subway Fugitive, not a slave to fashion, Bongo Boy, Frogman Berman. Our social <laughs> producers are David the Calves of Belleville Green and Catherine Frau Blucher Fenelosa. <laughs> our web lackey is Doug the Old Gray Mayor, assisted by Connie Bridgeford. Our engineer is John Cartman Parati. Our theme music is by David Dog Grisman. And our technical, spiritual, and menu advisor just back from his upset at the Cape Cod Cavalcade of Cutlets <laughs> is John Bugsy Lawler. Our public opinion pollster is Paul Murky of Murky Research, assisted by statistician Marge Novera. Our customer care representative is Haywood Jabuzoff. Our director of allergy research is Teresa Pollinating. Our meteorologist from the New Delhi office is Luke Autovindo. Our Elvis impersonator from the Cairo office is Amal Shukup. <laughs> <laughs> our Russian chauffeur is Peekoff and Dropoff. And our Australian tour guide is Joaquin Matilda. And of course, our seat cushion. T- of Dewey Cheetahman Howe and WBUR in Boston. And even though skunks turn up their noses whenever they hear us <laughs> say it, this is NPR. This message comes from NPR sponsor Data Aiku, an artificial intelligence platform committed to bringing